In this week's Stompy 51 miniature adventure, we're going to look at how I pulled together a Mantic Kings of War Salamander army from the bits and antediluvian bobs that I've got. Because late one sleepless night, I managed to listen to a Salamander army review on one of my favourite podcasts, the Counter Charge podcast, which is a Mantic Games Kings of War and Firefight podcast. And I remembered that I've always loved dinosaurs, and Mantic's Kings of War is effectively a miniature agnostic game where you can use whatever you've got. And if you watch this channel, you know I've got a lot. All right, let's start off with the um, Gecko Tar Hunters, who are basically skinks, and they come with blowpipes, range 18 inches, and they are vicious range, which means they can reroll. Uh, any ones on the d8 they roll on damage and they've got steady aim which means they don't suffer a minus one inch uh, penalty if they shoot so i thought it would be fun to use some of these um fifth edition skinks which i believe came in the box set the one with them fighting bretonians albeit the metals you had to buy separately I do love the fact you can multi-base in Kings of War, which means you can um, come up with a little bit of a bulkier thing for command, which means you have to paint fewer foot troops. And, you know, who really enjoys painting vast numbers of foot troops? Now, the interesting thing I find about these skinks is that you would think because there's only two different poses, that they wouldn't be that interesting or, you know, in this day and age of so many different kinds of multi-piece plastics that they would just look boring. But I wonder if it's because, you know, we as mammals just don't really spot the differences between different reptilians. They all look the same to us or they all look the same to me. And so I think it works just fine. And I played with the idea, if these ever get painted, of painting them all different colours. So they look like a kind of united colours of Benetton reptilian army. But I think that would look silly. I think I will choose one colour. Uh, and I think the, um, I don't even know what these are called. Crest over here. Presumably designed for mating and identification purposes. Maybe that could be a more interesting colour. So, you know, thoughts on a postcard as to what colour you'd paint. These. I think I'd do one for the body, one for the tum-tum, and one for the crest. And actually, certainly the faces are pretty detailed, I think, in terms of how much fun I'm having to go into painting them. But you can see that where there were kind of moulding issues, you know, for the time, that they're not as detailed as they could be. The other interesting thing I found is um, I didn't have these, I had to go buy them but you can get them reasonably affordably, even on eBay. But what interested me is, whereas, you know, the orcs and the goblins, or the high elves from this period, if you want to buy any, they're always painted badly because someone had a go. Whereas, no one ever seemed to want to paint their skinks. I just wonder if it wasn't actually that popular army at that time. And you know me, I love a bit of wargaming karma, and I love just using bases from different periods. So that's from 1984. That's from 1984. This is just a more recent set of bases. And some of these are from like 1995. And I just love working in bits, 92. I just love working in bits from different periods into the same army. So that's that unit of Gecko Tar Hunters, and they can only come in a regiment as opposed to a horde, presumably because they don't want dirty people shooting people off the table with a horde, or but you can get them in units of 10, but what's the point of that? I had a lot of fun with this model. It's on a 60 by 60. This little command base, forward slash unit filler. When I saw this command model, I thought, you know, he's got to be doing something dramatic, because even though he's little, you should see the other guy. Um, and so what I did was I took this broken cold one, 
which I've had for a while. Basically, I, I did a swap with some fellow a while back. I regularly do swaps. And I often say to the person, there's this great idea on Let Adventure Forum where they've got the bits box. This bits box has been traveling for about a decade and it just go, gets posted from person to person across the world. Uh, at great risk, presumably, it can get lost at any point. And everyone just takes out what they want and they have to put back in equivalent bits to what they've taken out. And um, I always, I've never been involved in that one, but I've always thought, you know, why don't I just do my own little bits exchange? And whenever I do a swap with someone for something, I say, look, why don't you put in a handful of broken bits and bobs you don't particularly want? You know, swords and shields or guns clipped off from various Games Workshop sprues. And you do the same, I'll do the same, and we'll see what we get. And this guy put in um, a cold one where the bottom half is all broken and mangled and all the legs are broken. And I remember thinking at the time, what in the world am I ever going to do with that? And then I thought, hey, maybe this could be part of some big battlefield brawl where, well, I'm not sure how the guy would have got half buried, really, in a single battlefield. But, you know, this is a battlefield full of magic and blasts. And maybe, you know, he just got half buried in, um, in some kind of huge bolt of magical lightning or some obscure and weird rainforest spell and so i just took so i stuck him down i stuck various things underneath here broken bits of plastic sprue to help build up the uh, clay that i put on top of it and also try and anchor the clay because i have a bad feeling that when the clay shrinks it kind of breaks and will crack off but i'm hoping that spraying it with halford's primer which is good enough to kind of adhere to cars will help this kind of all stick down and it provides a nice little setting little context and environment for this slightly crazed lizard oh, albeit you have to be careful about how you glue stuff into the clay because well, as you can see there he's just going to break off but i put him in there so that these guys would more closely adhere conceptually to the remainder of the skinks forward slash gecko tar hunters. And I need to spray these before the sand goes all over the place. And then I kept these skinks for years. Because in Warhammer 7th I bought some Seraphon or whatever they were called then, Lizardmen. And um, I never even played a game. And I seemed to get rid of them before I'd played a game. And they weren't very good miniatures that... I found the Saurus Warriors of the time weren't very, very good, the Warhammer 7th ones. Um, but I did like the Skinks. And so I kept those, thinking one day maybe I'll use them in a skirmish game. And now they've come into their own because the base kind of Gecko Tar come with blowpipes. Range 18, Vicious Ranged and Steady Aim. So pretty similar, the only difference being they're just slightly shorter range and 10 points less. The annoying thing about them is they don't really rank up. And I tried to think about this as I was making them. But it's kind of limited in terms of how you can actually um, assemble them. So what I think I might do is try a Tetris-like Rubik's Cube approach to seeing if they fit together in one way. And then I might just write on the back of them, you know, one, two, three, four, so that in the future I can just align them. As I mentioned, the chances are these probably won't ever get painted, but I will, that won't stop me from having any games I can. And for those who have wondered, yes, they get bigger. But the fun part of being mammalian versus reptilian is that I can't really tell the difference. And the idea of having some kind of mass spawned army of different species, given the rainforest has a gazillion types, seems entirely in keeping with me. And it doesn't matter that they are different kinds of gecko type. Now this guy, I can't think of anything to use him for. Thoughts on a postcard if you are familiar with the Salamander army. And he's some kind of snake from the a French game called Mythic Battles Pantheon. And this is the Greek myths box set. And him I kept because who doesn't want a giant skink-eating snake? But no obvious role for him yet. 
So it's quite apt that we were talking about Mythic Battles Pantheon because here are two other reptilian type miniatures that came with it. I think that's like the Dragon of Colchis. I'm not very big on Greek myth. And I'm going to use these as Commodons. And they are about the same speed as a human. Isn't it speed 5? Melee 5 plus, to, that's to hit on a, a, a D8. So that's not that great, 50-50. So it's pretty average. Range 5 plus, so it's a 50-50 chance of hitting. And they've got Bile Spew 36 inches with Blast D3 plus 1 with Piercing 1. So this is some nasty stuff that can get spat across a battlefield. Now, I'm no expert on reptiles. Would you, I mean, I've heard of spitting snakes. Can they spit literally half a mile? Probably not, but that's not going to stop me because, as you know from watching this channel, I always just try and use what I've got, and I've always got something. Now, foolishly, when I rebased this guy, because they came around with these plastic bases for Mythic Battles Pantheon, but I had to get them on 50mm bases, and again, I love kind of karma. This 50mm base has been floating around for about 20 years, and now it's got a modern kind of gaming piece sat on it. But it was supposed to be like a rattlesnake, where... Um, the body is touching the ground here, but the tail is being lifted in a kind of tit -tit 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 kind of rattlesnake kind of nasty, particularly aggressive way. And I thought that it was a miscast, and so I just raised the ground level here instead of leaving the tail looking raised and menacing. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. I think the reality was always going to be it would be too tough to um, to paint and base underneath it anyway. So. No loss there. And he's pretty big. I mean, look at how he scales against a little skink. So that's the Commodons. I haven't got the stats to hand, but they've got Croxigors, which are called Tyrants. And um, I, I thought to myself, the rest of this army looks pretty fifth edition, and the new plastic uh, Croxigors from Games Workshop look a little bit too, frankly, alien-esque. They don't really look in keeping with that age, that old age. And I thought, what can I use? So I didn't want to spend 20 quid per ancient Croxigore on eBay. Um, so I asked sort of on the various forums, does anyone want to swap for some of the older Croxigores? No one got back. And then I thought, hey, as I was rummaging through the garage, I came across these impact miniatures, um, Lizardmen Blood Bowl players, and I thought, um, you know, they look pretty 5th edition, you know, because they're kind of slightly comic as opposed to grim dark, and they are bigger than the Saurus, albeit not by much, but then again, you know, would you want to be bitten by those teeth? And I thought, what can I do to kind of make them look a bit more violent? as opposed to playing a fantasy football game. And so I stuck on this Erukin shield by Die Hard Miniatures from that guy and found some kind of Oruk blade. And I think it looks plausible. So it looked like some kind of crocodile special forces who just run through and just bite your head off. And this guy, there was no hand that could take a shield, obviously, but there was one that could take a blade a ceremonial blade and there's a kind of dynamism in, in them because that blood bowl esprit de corps of just flying forward and piling through the scrum looks just great in terms of piling through the scrum that is a push and pull rank and flank game and this guy just oozes menace i mean he had like a helmet of uh, some kind of human he'd beheaded but I just covered that appallingly in green stuff and tried to make it look like it was some kind of hessian bag he'd put a head into for a snack later. I mean, why he's murdered some poor pig, I don't know. But he's certainly been through a few opponents. He looks like he's from something, you know, collecting ears from Vietnam or something horrid. Um, I wasn't sure what to do to make him look a bit more military as opposed to sporty. And I don't know how successful this is, but I took the uh, long spear from some kind of orc fantasy chariot crew, snipped off the top and then stuck on this huge uh, ogre blade 
thinking, well, you know, these guys either, you know, create pretty crude weaponry or steal pretty crude weaponry because they just like the look of it. And uh, as they say, you should see the other guy. And although he is kind of holding the bladed part at the bottom, which I'm not sure he would do in real life, he's a thick-skinned, leathery crocodile. So he's just playing around with it. Like he'll play around with you. <laughs> so that's the tyrants. And then I had a few of these Erukin diehard miniatures, for want of a better word, slam, because that's what they were. Um, they're called Erukin. And he's going to be the mage. And he's a beast handler. I haven't got a role for him, but I thought I would paint him up. Well, I paint him up <laughs> one day. I thought I would assemble him because he looked cool and maybe one day there'll be a purpose. And you're allowed to have a kind of warrior boss and one of these two will be the warrior boss. I mean, he looks obviously a little bit alien, predator, I mean, but he looks properly like these guys came from the stars. Whereas he looks a bit more likely to be some kind of Mashika hero. And I gave him a fifth edition shield to try and help blend him in a bit more. And so one of these guys will be painted up, if they're ever painted, as a foot hero. But I thought my clan lord on Raptor Mount could be this miniature, which wasn't a great miniature, so I thought I would just see if I could spruce him up and make him look plausible. As you can see, if you look at the face, I mean, the features are barely distinguishable. But then again, I thought I could use that principle I described of where because we're mammals and these are lizards, we can't really tell the difference. And I didn't ever buy him. What happened was I bought some stuff off some fellow in Germany and uh, you know we agreed a good price and I was very happy with it and then he told me it would cost a fortune for postage and I said look that's a fair price for postage because that's how much it would cost you um, and I don't mind paying it but could you just throw in something anything just so I don't feel as ripped off by the postage you know as you've got a bit more weight to throw in it can be anything you don't want anything I'll take anything and he chucked in this which weighs a ton so it still that shows how much of the weight allocation was left and he said I really don't want this and I thought again what will I ever do with that and now maybe he's edged closer to actually getting onto the tabletop the journey that every miniature hopes to go on aka you know as in Toy Story where all the miniatures are just stuck at the back of their cupboard all the toys are stuck at the back of their cupboard hoping the child will play with them one day I had to do a bit of appalling green stuffing to get the tail to look like it was part of the rest of the miniature. I mean, this thing must be pretty, this is pretty old. If it's from the early 90s, we're talking, this is 30 years old. And it is probably properly led, so I'll make sure I don't lick it. But again, he's pretty good. And the other thing is, you know, if you've got a human army, everyone needs to be in keeping. But these guys, you know, if you just stick loads of different species, you can go wild. Then you've got these fire elementals, because the theme of the Salamander army is lizards, dinosaurs and fire. And these are prints by Duncan Shadow. And they kind of shamble along, which I think means they can only just walk as opposed to run. And they've got crushing strength too. So I suppose they will just run along and smash. So, in terms of the hammer anvil principle of a rank and flank game, I'm not sure I've got too much of a hammer, just loads of anvils, but hey ho. I suppose the linchpin of the army is going to be this unit of salamander primes, aka lizardmen, saurus, whatever they're called. And they are, they come with crushing strength one, so they can just put a big clunk through you. Melee four plus, so just better than 50-50 of thumping you. And they've got pretty high defense, five plus. And um, there's no obvious use for this beautiful slan 
mage model. I've always wanted one of these. And uh, I bought one of these secondhand on one of the forums, but it didn't have all the right pieces. And I thought I could kind of find clever bits and bobs to add them. And then I realized my creativity in my mind didn't stretch to reality. And so at a bit of a price, I had to pick up the rest of the bits on eBay, which meant the whole thing might've been a bit more expensive than just buying it whole on eBay. Albeit I think at some point this was re-released and I'm sorry I missed it at the point. But the thing is, until I saw these rules for Saurus, I mean for um, Salamanders in Kings of War, there was no obvious way to uh, play with old Lizardmen. But the thing is, I'm pleased that I did this because I'm pleased at all the, the lot, the pieces that were necessary because I can't believe I ever thought that I would do this without these amazing little banners. You truly feel as if the gods are looking down upon you. Although even that required a little bit of creativity. Well, creativity. I just had to go find another spear shaft and put a paper clip here to get it to, to work because it had it didn't come with its the, the bottom of its shaft. And there was a lot of pinning that went into this, and I'd forgotten how much I hate pinning, but it was well worthwhile, because he is now a fantastic unit filler. And if anyone has an idea of how this could be more appropriately used, do let me know. But he doesn't have to be a wizard, he could just be the emperor. Some fun Mashika name. And then last but not least, we've got these Pterodon Riders from 5th edition, and they can be Scorch Wings, who have an 18 inch fire sparks shooty weapon, which I suppose would just be them blowing flames outside their mouths whilst their little skink riders shout, burn them, burn them all. And nothing wrong with that. The only thing with these is I'll have to work out how to base them on 40 mil bases so that they rank up. And I think the only way of doing it might be to find stands of varying height. Oh, I'll have to think it through. But they do look quite fun. And they look totally Trish Morrison, don't they? Gorgeous. Oh yes, and these down here, they're also diehard miniatures, Erukin. And I thought it's in keeping to have them standing here because clearly these Saurus aren't the brains of the operation. They're just there to thump. And so you need someone with a bit more, a bit more brains in their head to act as the tactical leadership on the table. But we'll leave it there for today. Thank you very much for watching to the end. I recognise how important your time is and I'm delighted you spend it with me by all means subscribe if you haven't already and if you know about kings of war let me know if you think this is a vaguely viable list i think it comes to about 1250 either way leave me a comment keep well keep safe and i hope to see you back soon you never know i might actually play a game with these guys